Right. So um, now we are going to discuss about maps application. So maps application, the special thing about this maps application uh, is we just have one maps application to do all types of analysis. And we'll be looking at today how to use the event and the fragmented layers of the maps application. So the objectives is to describe the maps app as it relates to the tractor data and to describe the limitations of maps when working with tractor data and to create maps using tractor data within the event layer and the tract entity layer. So in the maps app, if, uh, I mean, we, we all have, must have used, if we have used DHS2 at some point of time for analysis, uh, Maps application is a very common uh, application that most of us use. So when we interact with uh, tracker data in the uh, Maps application, we are actually dealing with three different layers. The first one is a thematic, then events, and the track entity layer. Unlike the event reports and event visualized applications, the Maps app allows for visualization of both aggregate and tracker data. So both these uh, uh, components can be visualized within the single maps application. So let us now uh, briefly look at each of the events, uh, each of the layers uh, that are available for us to analyze tracker data in the maps application. So the first one is the event layer. The event layer, of course, allows us to map the locations of an actual event, right? As long as the coordinates is collected during the data entry. And working with tracker and event data in this layer is exactly the same, right? So uh, when we are working with the event layer, both the tracker and event data uh, works in the same way. And when it comes to the tracked entity layer, this is a, a separate layer, which is different to the event layer. Uh, this allows us to map the locations of tracked entity as long as it is collected during the registration. Right here, this layer also allows you to show relationships. So remember, track entity layer is the one that we are currently using to show relationship type of visualization. But again, uh, this layer has some limitations that we will be discussing while we are uh, doing the demonstration. And finally, uh, we have the thematic layer. And this thematic layer allows us to map aggregate data in two forms. The first one is the program indicator. And the second is to aggregate um, is the aggregate data elements within a tracker or event program, right? So both these uh, will be able to visualize using the thematic layer. Uh, but we are not going to do uh, this layer during the demonstration today. Right. So let us now uh, do the demo. So let me share my screen again. All right, so uh, what I will do is I just open the tracker capture application. You click on apps and then go to the tracker capture, not the maps. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I will show you uh, why, why, why I want to show tracker capture first. Because I want to show you where we are capturing these coordinates because it is quite important uh, to notice where we are capturing the coordinates for us to really understand what will be displayed when. So I click on tracker capture application and this is where I land in the tracker capture. So I will just select. Um, let me just uh, so let me refresh. Okay, I have logged out. Right, okay. So now I'm in the tracker capture application and I can select any of the programs. So for now, I will select this case based surveillance program, right? And in that one, I'm going to click on the register button. So when I do that, you will see under this profile uh, uh, title here, you see point of map, right? So this is where we are capturing the coordinates of a tracked entity instant. So whenever we are using the tracked entity layer, the coordinates are coming from what we are capturing here. So in the web, we can actually enter directly or we can uh, capture uh, from the map itself, right? 
or else in the Android uh, we have a separate way of capturing right so the tracker uh, so track entity for the track entity layer the locations are coming from what we capture here right let me go back to the list view again so that I can open up um, yeah, run uh, records and when I do that here you will see inside the data entry tab right for each of the program stages we have an option to capture coordinates here right so this is called event point right so whatever the coordinates captured here are the ones that will be analyzed when we are doing any visualizations using the event layer in the maps application right so this event point it's very important to identify where the coordinates are coming from so it is coming from the event point right and the next thing i want to show is that the relationships right so this relationship is is an area again which is kind of under development a lot of enhancements will be done in the dhs2 data model and the analysis component to do the relationship analytics so here we have this app, uh, tab here to add a relationship so basically what we do is when we click on add we will be able to select a type of relationship so what we mean by a type of relationship is like we we configure it separately we are not going to cover configuration of uh, relationships uh, in this course but when we have already configured a relationship for example right now we have two different relationships we have con uh, configured first one is has been in contact with second one is person to person so if we have defined a relationship like has been in contact with right it will let us select <clears throat> uh, different persons from the program right we can search them right who will be related to this particular patient that we have uh, opened in this tracker dashboard so for example now this patient is um, a name test right uh, with the same surname case it's a, just a test record so we are defining here who are the persons this patient name test case has been in contact with right so here we, we are identifying two people the first one is uh, the person test and the second one is harry right so that way we can define in the track entity dashboard the people who this index case has been in contact with right so these three concepts i wanted to show you before moving into the maps application so let's now move to the maps i click on the apps button here and select the maps right so in the maps we'll be discussing again two different layers mostly in this demonstration so the first one is the event layer the second one is a track entity layer so i will be covering the track entity layer first right which of course will have uh, will be listed under exercise 2 in the learner's guide right so i'm changing the order slightly to start with the track entity and then we will move to the events so let us now create a new map so what i will do is uh, now in this maps application let us uh, see the interface first so on to our left we have uh, a component where we can keep on adding layers so these layers will be added on top of each i mean existing layer so right now the lowest layer will be automatically added which is the base map so we can select whatever the different base map so the standard is the osm light but we can uh, select something else for example i can even select osm detail right so based on that the, the this, this base map will be changing right and then we have the button to add layer and then on to our uh, right side we have two other but, uh, tabs the first one is the file which has few options like new open save save as which is kind of similar to the standard options we had in the other analytics application and then we also have the option to download so let me <clears throat> uh, add some layers first i will add a layer um, I will add a layer uh, which is the org unit layer as a boundary layer. So I'm going to select the org unit layer here, right? And I will select the first one, right? The capital. 
and once I have done that I click on add layer and what it will simply do is to add a boundary right organization unit right you don't see anything here other than defining the boundary okay right so this is not really a, a tracker or event analytics yet but next I'm actually going to add a track entity layer to demonstrate this first, con first concept so what I'm going to do is to click on add layer and here I will select tracked entities right this one and then it will ask me to select the tracked entity type so in the system we currently have only one tracked entity type defined which is the person I select that and it is asking select the program so I'm going to select the program we have three programs out of them I'm going to select the case based surveillance program right and then now now see the interesting thing here right so it is not asking us um, to select the program stages right so remember in the tracked entity layer in, in current um, in as of what it is now in the maps application we can't really analyze data that we are capturing in the program stages right that we will show you next in the event layer so right now we are only considering about the individual tracked entity instances or else the persons in this uh, context right so here it is giving us options to select like uh, uh, persons who are i mean all persons or who are having active or completed or cancelled uh, enrollment so right now i will just uh, keep it as it is um, and select uh, all right who are enrolled to dr bamot can we select the two options within that i mean active and completed it doesn't really make sense uh, dr uh, uh, Deepal, because right now for a given enrollment in a program you can i mean it can be either active or completed per person for, per program right so a person or a tracked entity instance can have a enrollment in a program which could be either active completed or cancelled you can't have multiple statuses uh, uh, for a for a given enrollment having said that if you have multiple enrollments meaning like you may have had uh, past enrollments then that is different but here uh, for a given enrollment you can only have one state so that's why you are only having uh, like that so uh, that's why so but but uh, uh, so in in your inst example um like what i i get what you are trying to say but uh, here the context is you are actually looking at a single enrollment which is having one possible state but to incorporate all the tracked entity instances because we are actually analyzing tracked entity instances here and not really the enrollments that's why we have the all options right but if we ideally wants to look at enrollments then um, we may be we may have a requirement to have uh, you know like to select uh, more than one of them but here uh, the use case is slightly different uh, but probably this can be requested as a feature the only use case i can think of is if you want to do a enrollment analytics of people who are having a completed or active and not a cancelled something like that which is not so common so that's why it is not there at the moment but yeah, of course, uh, we can request and see whether um, the core team will be uh, able to incorporate something like that. Right. Uh, okay. So that's all what we can define in the data parameter. And then the next thing is relationships. So again, the big box warning. This is currently an experimental feature because, I mean, a uh, lot of improvements to the relationship analytics is being discussed right now, which is not really there. So here... It is giving us the option to display the tracked entity relationships, right? So uh, it will list out all the possible tracked entity relationships that which are there. So right now, what we have here uh, are two, like has been in contact with and person to person. So I will select the first one has been in contact with, right? And then the period. So the period, of course, uh, we can select, like uh, we can, of course, select the uh, period when tracked entities were last updated or the program enrollment date. So I will, um, what I will actually do is I will change the start date 
probably to um, 2022 January 1st. Yeah, and end date I will keep it as it is. And for the org units, we can select where we are displaying. So for this example, I will take this um, particular org unit here, right? And then, of course, we have another parameter called uh, style. I'm not going to touch that, but just uh, we can look at what is here. So it will be showing tracked entities in the color uh, with the color red, right? And when it comes to the relationships, the related entities will be shown with black color and the line connecting the index or the tracked entity that we are discussing now to the related entity will be highlighted in blue color, right? Okay, so let us click on add layer and see what we get, right? We do that and this is what we see. So we have our first layer. Now, can you see? It is like we are adding uh, on to existing layers. I'm focusing on the left side. So we have the base map here and then we have the org unit, the boundary layer, what you are seeing here. And then on top of that, we have the tracked entity layer. In the tracked entity layer, what we are seeing is the, these uh, red ones. So I can just uh, click here, see, like this is uh, one case that we have here, right? And these tracked entity instances are connected in this blue lines to the related tracked entity instances, right? So for example, all these highlighted in black are the related ones. So here we are only showing tracked entity instances. We haven't really discussed about the data. So um, now there are few drawbacks um, as of the current, I mean, as of the current status of the app. For example, we can only create relationships and visualize entities within a single program so supposedly like if we have two programs one tracking one registering all the covid patients and then we have a separate program for contact uh, mapping and visualization the 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 um, uh, yeah the mapping process and the contact tracing then we can't kind of create this uh, a link between these two tracked entities right so that's one limitation major limitation which is currently there uh, in this app right and also um, we are not able to visualize any data, right? So this is only within the scope of tracked entities that we can uh, do this visualization, right? So these are some limitations of this uh, current application. And uh, so as I mentioned before, relationship analytics is a major thing that is currently being discussed. So probably we can expect more and more features being added to the relationship application and uh, to, the, to the relationships concept as well as the maps application in time to come, right? All right, so this is about the tracked entity layer. So uh, please uh, go to the maps uh, section in Moodle and uh, download the learner's guide and please do the exercise two, not one. The one is the, the event layer, which we'll be covering next, but uh, you can do the um, exercise in the uh, exercise two in the learner's guide. So uh, probably we will give you around 10 minutes and then we will be coming back to start the events later.